We are back in Northwest Arkansas inside the reserve at Wellington's for the blend after dark and we're starting off right. Some royalty here in Fayetteville area, Arkansas. We've got Ken Hamlin. How are you, my friend? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right about so. I am wonderful. Well, first of all, yes, this is your cigar we're smoking, the uh, the 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 arrival, right? Yes, indeed. The arrival. We're gonna get into that in a second. But first of all, I want I was on your Instagram today. I wasn't stalking. I just you just popped up. <laughs> uh, his Instagram is the Ken Hamlin, and you had breakfast. You were at the football stadium smoking a stogie, just kind of reminding you of your youth. Listen, freshman at Arkansas, first freshman defensive back to ever lead the league in ever lead the team in, in tackles. So you right out the gate, you were you were doing well. I tried. I mean, I, I tried I, and yeah, succeeded. I, I tried. I mean, you know what? Um, it, the competitiveness that we had on that team, mm -hmm. it just bled trying to just be better, get better, try to compete with the other guys and um, and just see what comes and who sort of rises to the top. That I would imagine, this is why I think sports, because very few people were able to do what you did with played eight years in the NFL and, and a pro bowler with the Cowboys. But that's that competition, and that's whether you're in business, whether you're whatever you do in life, it's that competition with your with your teammates. Definitely, uh, I think that's the one thing. That's the great thing about football uh, that that team sport that sort of sort of it it sort of brings the leaders to the top, the other guys, whatever. If even if you are a follower, you you know and you learn how to follow the right way. You learn how to be a part of a team. You learn, and that you can use that in so many ways down the line once you get done with playing sports. So I think it's definitely a great start for anybody to be a part of, to sort of learn the different concepts mm -hmm. of life. Absolutely, and that's what it is. It is, a, it is a preparation for what life brings. So what was it hanging out at the stadium this morning? You know, oh, man. quiet and you're just sitting there in your thoughts, what was it? Well, you see, I mean, you, you see all the upgrades. Like We, we didn't have that when we, when we were playing. <laughs> this wasn't the, we didn't have all the glitz and the glam of what you see and what you saw yesterday at the right, stadium. Right. Uh, it was a little bit more rough and raw, but um, to see what I feel like a lot of our, a lot of the guys before me and when I played, what we created, what we built, that's, um, right. that's something that we sort of built up to where now they get to sort of, sort of, sort of dwell in in, in all of that in, in the spoils of what we sort of built, like building it up to what it is now. So it was just great to be back to sort of see it sort of take it in for a minute. Um, and then for the first time, like sitting back and enjoying enjoying the arrival at the stadium was, uh, yeah. was definitely a good, a good, a good idea, a good experience. That That's one of those mama, I made it kind of thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, you know what? It was, it was cool to sort of see, cause you think about the football side and then after the football uh, side of it as well and it coming together, um, it definitely was a good, uh, just a good start to, uh, to the trip to the day. All right. So, 2003, you get drafted by the Seattle Seahawks. So you go play there. And we, we talked earlier and just your teammates, the people you got to play with yeah. um, during your eight year career. I mean, you played with the Seahawks, the Cowboys, the Ravens, the Colts. I mean, you had Jerry Rice as a teammate, yeah. Peyton Manning as a teammate, Ray Lewis as oh, yeah. a teammate, you know, Terrell Owens as a teammate. What did that do for you? Just, just kind of, this, you know, being in the same room, seeing how they work. How did that help you both on the field and off the field? Definitely, a lot of a lot of guys who were either Hall of Fame guys or great complimentary guys, leaders, um, guys that led and played a certain way. That I just took pieces of what they did daily and, and try to add. I mean, I think about John Randall, mm -hmm. who I played oh, yeah. with at, oh, yeah. at Seattle. Walter Jones, who I played with in Seattle. Um, these guys. You know, quietly. Now, John Randall wasn't quiet, but uh, uh, you know, but Walt Jones, being a guy that was a quiet lead, a quiet, you know, guy that was, I mean, from the very start of his career, sure. was amazing. And to see how he did things, John Randall, a guy that was sort of told no so many times, and to build up to what he, uh, the Hall of Fame career that he had, an undersized guy that played big, and I think that was, I, I took a lot of that as well because. You know, you think about at the position and, and just playing, uh, you know, with so many guys that were talented, naturally talented, um, naturally had speed, mm -hmm. naturally had strength, naturally had all these things. And and I was a guy that was like one of those late bloomers that you had to work extra hard. And, and I didn't mind it, but it just put that extra chip on my shoulder to go out and sort of prove myself and prove others wrong as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and that's kind of that inter inner competition that you have with yourself. So. You know, you, you put together a very fine eight-year career in the NFL. Then then life becomes interesting because now it's what's next for football, you know, after football. 
and then you've discovered the cigar. And one thing we like to do here at, at, at the Blend After Dark is I always ask people, how did the cigar find you? Because I don't think we find a cigar, the cigar finds yeah. us. And your story of how the cigar found you was amazing. Well, you know what? Um, so smoking cigars, I mean, I've probably been smoking 15, 16 years now, but it, it started as a celebratory thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sure. we win a game. And like I told you, we, <laughs> you know, this was one of like the, 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 you know, it doesn't happen often where you go into a gas station and um, a what? A gas station. A gas and, and now, station. Now, there are certain gas stations that have some respectable cigars. I mean, now you got to find them. It's right. not like they have them at every Exxon or Shell. But <laughs> right, right. Um, this one, uh, my first cigar, uh, a Padron, Padron 64, where where you don't see those. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, a Padron 64 at a gas What city? Where was Padron, this? Dallas, Texas. I mean, I mean, I would eat the sushi there at that point. <laughs> you, you know, so Any you, of the chicken they have and tacos, <laughs> you might want to try. It. I don't know, but they, they have lobster and filet mignon oh, and man. with the padrone. But but my biggest thing was not knowing about cigars. You know what? <laughs> okay, buy the most expensive one. It has to be the best. Sure. So you go in. I, I I saw it. I was like, okay, this is the most expensive. Let me try it. Not even knowing that padrone was padrone and, and, and is what padrone is and and it has the. The history and, and the, just the the credentials that, yeah. that Padron has. Yeah. So um, started there, and it, it was sort of like no looking back from there because you know it, it just became a common thing of us. Okay, we go celebrate a win, go get a cigar, kick back and relax, and that's how it it, it all got started from there. And then it built it built into me, uh, you know, getting later on in my career and actually going to a cigar lounge and sitting down and mm -hmm. being around so many different walks of life, yeah. but all enjoying this one thing. I've always said this, and we've talked about it here on the show, on The Blend After Dark, is that the cigar is, is you know, a good friend of ours uh, here who owns Open Door, you know, says that a cigar is a portable campfire. And, you know, you, know, you walk around and you, and you can just start a conversation. Yeah. Whether you're a nine to five blue collar guy, or you're a CEO, everything in between, we're, st we're smoking the same. We're both smoking the arrival. And, and that, that's a connection there. That conversation can lead so many different ways. I mean, I, I look at a cigar lounge being the same experiences as being on a golf course mm -hmm. and just the different groups that you might end up playing with and what comes from it, the conversation that comes from it, the networking that comes from it, or just the, the, the common respect for the person that you're sitting down and talking to. And uh, I mean, it, it happens so many times where you travel and go to a cigar lounge and you sit down and you never know what might happen from that one conversation because you all are enjoying a cigar or the conversation comes up about what you're smoking and you mm -hmm. start talking from that and it leads to so many different things. So you get into the cigar business, you know, or, or, or it, it sort of stoked your fire. You well, know? yeah, it didn't, it didn't start where I just said, you know what, Padron 64, right. I want it. Right. Um, but you also strike me as the kind of guy that, that if you're going to go and do something, you want oh. to get yourself, you want to immerse yourself. In. Listen, you want to know everything about it. You got to, you, 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 if you want to do it, there's only one way to me, the only one way to do it. Right. There, there isn't a way where you go and, and you go from, you know, just smoking a cigar and saying, you know what, I want to try it out. Right. right. No, no, no. If, I, if you're going to do it. So I started, I, I became a member of a cigar lounge. I started going to um, some of the events. They call it a PCA now, but the IPCPR, which was in Vegas the big smoke in Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was at the IPCPR in Vegas, uh, I saw a booth for a pro cigar fest. And I was like, you know what? It's in Dominican Republic. I'm like, this is amazing. This would be a great experience to go to. First year I thought about it. I tried to wait and get all the guys together. Like, let's do this. Yeah. And everybody was like, yeah, let's do it. Then it got time to do it. Nobody, nobody wanted to go. <laughs> so I ended up missing out on going that year. And the, the next year I said, you know what? I don't wear, I'm not worried about anybody else going, I'm going. Probably was the best experience for me because I went by myself. So I was able to really just dive into everything that was going on, not worry about, you know, partying or, you know, having fun having, with my it's, friends. It's, you know, we, we, all, we all have those friends. You oh, know? yeah. You know, it's, it's hurting cats, you know. Trying, oh, yeah. So the guy takes longer in the shower, that other guy's <laughs> over here, this person's over there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so it, was a great, it was a great experience of going by myself and really, being able to experience all the events, being able to you know meet so many different people from all around the world, and that sort of just struck, that that started it up where I was like you know the possibility. Right. Then I went back and I went back and um you know just started having conversations with different factory owners and different you know growers and uh, the master blenders and, and you know and then you know they sort of saw me, you know doing certain things that I was doing on my own as well. I mean I went 
I, I, I Google. Google is amazing, what I tell you. So <laughs> I went on Google and um, found a guy in Alaska that has Cuban seeds. Alaska that had Cuban seeds. That's, I mean, it's, you, it's, you are a blessed man listen, free between it, it, a Padron <laughs> at a gas station hey. and Cuban seed in Alaska. So I, I ordered some seeds from him, uh, got them in, and uh, I started growing tobacco at my house. Um, hmm. So I had the, the the little dish in the garage with all these different plants growing up with the lights and everything on it. My wife thought I was growing weed. Or <laughs> she, it was a, yeah, she was like, I'm not going to jail for you. I'm not going to jail. But, um, and then I, you know, I, I went through the entire process of, of growing tobacco and cutting it and and hanging it and drop to dry and everything. So you were you were 100 on this. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to see what it was about. I, I, I've talked to some of the growers, and of course, you see the mass growing that they do. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, I just wanted to see if it was possible. Um, and then when I saw that it was possible, I grew it, got to a certain phase, and I just stopped and I pulled all the, all of them out and was like, okay, I did it. <laughs> well, the following year. I look in my garden and something is growing again, and I'm thinking it's weeds. I'm like, you know yeah, what? Yeah. I gotta pull these weeds, with it. but it ended up being tobacco. Wow. And so I was like, okay, this is sort of like a sign. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take sure. it to the next level and, sure. and see what the next steps are. And um, so I got, I got all the way to the fermentation process, and that's when I, I Google sort of, I went overboard with Google because I, I, I built this contraption in my garage that was over the top, like. The, the contraption that I built, I'm talking about styrofoam that was like like seven or eight inches thick, uh, probably like four feet tall. I mean, I grew, I built this thing for probably like a production of 30,000 leaves. Now, but what I only were had, your friends saying? I mean, I know your wife was like, okay, oh, yeah, oh my God. Yeah. But what were you, what were you, would people come over to your house and be like, Ken, what's going on in Listen, here? I just told them to wait. <laughs> something was happening. Like, look, something was happening. But the production that I was doing it for I only had like 60 leaves. Like, so I was doing something way over the top. So right. I ended up going back to the growers and asking them, like telling them what I was doing. And, and they sort of gave me some tips to say, they say basically what you did was way too much. I mean, I had an elect my electric, my electrician friend come over, turn my thermostat to where it can go up to like 130 degrees. I had all types of stuff in there. I had, I had the whole works. So um, that, that whole thing like sort of went out and I, I wasn't able to move forward with it, but it just gave me even more interest in, okay, I see all these different steps. I see when I go to the factory, so many people that are involved in making this one cigar. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many people, and you, they talk about it all the time where they say, you know, a hundred, 200, 300 people have touched this one cigar. But when you go to the factory and get to see the process and how many people are responsible for that one cigar. Yeah. That you're sitting back and then smoking for right. 45 minutes to an hour or two hours. Right. Um, it, it gives you a, even more respect for it. So that's when I really went back down to DR and I, I started really having these conversations with. And I remember I went to Casada, I went to La Aura, and uh, I was talking with some of the people there. And then I seen Guillermo Leon, who's the head of La Aura. Mm -hmm. I seen him at the gala event the night that, that next evening. And he was like, well, I hear you're interested in possibly doing your own cigar. And I was like, well, I've been, yeah, I've been thinking about it. He was like, well, look, uh, if you're really serious, I'm gonna give you my schedule. You can come back down and we can start the process. Wow. And I think the one thing is that they saw the things that I was doing right. on my own as well. So they knew that I wasn't, and I let them know too, that I, this wasn't something that I wanted to just say, you know what, hey, slap my name on it and let's you know, give put me, me a plan together. I'll see you at the end of the I month. wanted to actually be a part of the entire process. It's like, it's like me with my suits. Mm -hmm. I don't tell I don't tell somebody with hey just make me ten suits and keep it going no right I want you to bring the books in I want to see the material I want to wow. put stuff together I want to wow. I, I want to be a part of it because I feel like you have more of a story to tell and be a part of than just to say you know what I got some suits right or I just have you're a invested cigar. exactly you're invested exactly all right so the folks from La Aurora get you started help you out a little bit and all of a sudden comes your cigar brand. Your oh yeah. Cigar line. Oh yeah. I mean, I, it, it was. It wasn't like a job or anything because it was fun. The process was fun. I mean, I I got to go in and sit. I mean, I I think about it. I was set in a marketing meeting for like six hours of creating the box, creating mm -hmm. the band, um, you know, all these different things outside of just the cigar. Out of out of smoking, tons of tobacco sure, to really sure. come Getting together to with. Point, yeah. Oh yeah, to get to that one point of just having the cigar. So that was one thing, and then now you got to go into the other parts of it because. I look at uh, the whole cigar box and a cigar as 
so I, I think of the cigar box mm -hmm. as a car. Okay. You want your woman to be in a nice car. Sure. So of course you got to make a nice box. I look at the band as being the dress that you want her in. So you want the band to look wow, good. Okay. You want it to actually present itself right. And the cigar is that woman. So you want a hot woman, something that, that's that's nice. That's, right. So you got to put all these pieces together to sort of make that entire package. So I took it all serious. I took the entire process. Serious. I didn't want to cut corners any type of way. So I wanted to make sure the box was nice. I wanted to make sure the band was nice. And of course, the cigar was nice as well. So we, we arrive at your line, which is The Arrival. Now, the arrival. your nickname um, is The Hammer. The Hammer. Okay. And that was originally what you wanted to call this thing, The Hammer, or even oh, no. El Martillo. El Martillo. Mar That's hot. That's See, hot. Listen, I thought that was sexy as hell. I'm like, listen, this is it. Right. And as soon as I said that, I went to the lawyer and told him that. He said no. And I was like, uh. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? What? No, because it, it was a lot of other companies that had affiliations, different type of things that was going to make it difficult to just have a clean slate going into the business. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to ruffle feathers. Me being new, and I want to respect the people that have been a part of this for generations. Right. Um, so there was an issue. So I was like, okay, we won't do the hammer. Uh, even though, like, Manuel Onoa, who is the master blender for Laura, in the in the aging room, my cigars are still on the label of my cigar. It still says Hammer. Oh wow! But uh, but officially, it's the arrival. So and then so once it couldn't be Hammer, um, the lawyer said, "Hey, listen, don't send me because I was sending him like one name here, <laughs> one name there, and he kept turning it down." I'm like, okay. So he was like, "Look, don't do that. Take a few weeks." When you think of a name, write it down, write it down, write it down, and then send me like 20 or 30 names and mm -hmm. we'll go through that. So it took about a month and I you know, went through that process of all these different names and going through and then um, I sent it to him. He said no to about 20 of them immediately. And so uh, the arrival stuck around and I started to think because I, I thought about it when I was thinking of these names, but I started to think even deeper, like what does it mean to me? Yeah, what, what is the arrival? So the arrival, I think about when I, so even when I played football, Mm -hmm. the same thing with the cigar or whatever. I, I want to make an impression and an impact. So when you arrive, like that's why I say the statement of you have arrived. Because when you arrive, you want to leave that impression on somebody and make that impact on somebody. Right. So that's the biggest thing for me is that that cigar is going to make an impression and an impact. Same thing that I, I wanted to do on the football field. Well, talking about impressions and impact, let's talk about the box, okay? So we've got right here a box of the arrival. And yes, indeed. First of all, I mean, look at this thing. It is amazing. And it it's it's an homage to your NFL career, even just the colors. Walk walk me through it. So instead of slapping, you know, Cowboys or Seahawks or sure. anything on the actual box, and I wanted to definitely let the make the cigar sit on its own, but I wanted to bring some, like you said, some homage to the what what actually brought me to this moment. So I did a cowboy blue lid, mm -hmm. sort of gave it that sort of respect from the Cowboys and from the beginning where I started Seattle. So I wanted to have the cigars make it look like it's set in a nest. Yeah, because you've so got a bird's these little, nest. It's a bird's nest, so right? So it's basically yeah. all of the, the tobacco, the tobacco stems that ah. were basically in bags all around the factory, just leftovers. But wow. I was like, you know what? We can use that. Sure. And so we used that to make it look like it's set in the bird's nest. So it gave it gave that respect to both both teams that right. I that I definitely played with. Oh, I, I love it. And again, it's so, it's so, I guess the best way I can say it, it's so clean. It's clean, Definitely. it's sharp. It's, it's got this, you know, the, the finish that it has. The shine that it has that gives it that impression. And my thing is, you know, especially with so many great cigars that are going to be in a, in a humidor, mm -hmm. you want that cigar to sort of stand out a little bit. Right. And of course, again, that impact and impression that, that you wanted to sort of give it something to where people might not know anything about it, but it catches their eye. Right. And I think that this is something that sitting in a humidor with so many great, you know, cigars and brands. Right. right. This is something that will give that sort of like, oh, look at me real quick. And then people who might not have even thought to give it a try, it'll, it'll catch their eye to, give, to so, give them a thought of giving it a try. So this is the Grand Toro that I've got here. Yes. And and so so what are the Vitolas you got? Well, how many how many lines do you have? And so stuff? right now I want I started out with one line, one blend, three different Vitolas. So Robusto, Toro, and then the Grand Toro that we're smoking. Mm -hmm. I love it. Now, it's it's got to be amazing to you. I mean, you know, you you're, you know, you've been at the highest level of things, played with some amazing people. When you walk into a shop, 
and you see your box in there. I mean, what 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 kind of goes through your head there? See, I, the problem is, is that I don't take enough time to sort of bask in that moment because yeah. I'm already like, okay, this goal was met, now I set the next one. What's this next? goal is met, now I set the next one. Okay. And, and so at times, whatever, I, I have to like remind myself, like, you know, take some time to really, to really like let yourself relax and, and enjoy that moment. But because I automatically, once this one was out, I was like, all right, now what's next? Like, what, what, yeah, I got to. It, well, Something sort of, has to be better. Like, it's like it has, that NFL mentality. Yeah. Like, okay, it, it, it's it's Redskins week. Or you can't it, sit you know, in it. It's like, Giants I, week. Yeah, because you, know? you know I got drafted. You can't sit in that so long because now you got to make the team. You got to start. Now you got to make the Pro Bowl. Now you got to like it's all. And then of course week to week you got this next game. You got mm-hmm. so it's that mentality. But um, I mean when you see it on the shelf and then you see a person who grabs the cigar to go to, to go to purchase it or who starts smoking and they look at you and they give you that look like uh, yeah yeah, yeah. that. This is nice. That right there is a is a it's just affirmation in itself to like okay you can I I I subtly pat myself on the back like I got another guy. okay good all right good but um, it only builds more like into me where I'm like the next one has to be better right the next one has to like blow it out of the water like I mean it, it has to like and not even just blow this out the water but I want that impression even more. I want that thought even more. I want someone saying, you know what? Wow. Like you did it again. That mm-hmm. type of feel where now it's like, okay, you made it to the Pro Bowl. All right, now make it to it, make it again. Right. Or you made that big hit or that tap, make it again. Right. And that's the thing, whatever. So it, I'm like on to the next, like, okay, this is here. Now we got to go to get this next one. Now you're obviously a man of, of, of fashion and there, there's a quote of yours that really stuck out to me where it sort of encompasses, I think, everything that you're about. It's, it's, Smoke well, look good. Oh yeah. Walk me through that. So it's, I mean, this is a culture. This is a, this is um, first off, this is not a this is not a cheap hobby. Right. Um, no. So it it comes with like you can't just come in and just be buying sticks all day long or just be in this type of environment and and not be able to handle what all it encompasses. So I feel like when you are dressed a certain way, got a great cigar, maybe a drink or something, and you're relaxing. It's all about everything. Mm-hmm. It's not just a cigar, but it's about everything that you have, what you got going on, how you're looking, how you're feeling, everything, what you're drinking, what you're smoking. It, it, it's all of it. And I think that embodies the entire like culture of the cigar world and what it's about. Because, And then also it's about the fact of we could be smoking different things mm-hmm. and my experience, or we could be smoking the same thing, and my experience with this cigar is different than yours. Not to say it's better, but it's different because mm-hmm. of what mindset I'm in. Right. You know, everything that I got going on, and that experience with me could be so so off the charts because of where I am mentally. Right. And I think that that's the biggest thing is as far as looking good, smoking good, and just really enjoying the entire vibe. I, I love it. So, so Ken Hamlin, what's next? So I just got back from uh, Dominican Republic a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, working on two more blends um, with some amazing, of course, Manny and Noah, we're, we're still working on some stuff with Laura. I actually got the chance uh, four years ago to meet Eladio Diaz, mm. uh, who's who's the master blender for Davidoff. He was the master blender for Davidoff for over 38 years. Amazing. Um, been in the cigar <clears throat> world for 60 years. Um, and we have sat down to, to start working on some stuff as well. So I mean, this is it, it's going to be I, it, it's going to be amazing because of the people that I've met, the relationships that I have built out there, and just the possibilities. Um, it's definitely going to be exciting to see the next couple of things coming up, and then what happens after that. Yeah, I can I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in the body. <laughs> it's going to be nice. It's going to definitely be nice. I yeah. mean, I, I'm I, I'm I'm definitely anticipating uh, that 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 type of feedback where it's like, mm-hmm. wow. Okay, because I have I have one cigar that I've been working. On. I actually blended it when I was in um, Nicaragua. I went on a tour out in Nicaragua and uh, blended one that was a because so many people look at so when you look at a Connecticut mm-hmm. wrapper and so many people have this mindset that you know Connecticut's light breakfast you yeah, know something yeah. that's you know oh it's not especially for people who are more full body or medium to full body smokers they look at that Connecticut and automatically think something that's light or right. weak or yeah but my thing was to blend something that, okay, it gives you that look, 
but it's 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 giving you way more than you would experience or expect from a Connecticut rapper. So we got a few things in the works. Sounds like a hammer to me. Yeah, you know, uh, hammer 2.0. Yeah, yeah, hammer 2.0. Well, where, where can we find uh, The Arrival Cigars? Where can we find it? On social media, the website? Well, social media, The Arrival Cigars. Um, the, the website is arrivalcigars.com. Uh, so that has all the information. Um, I'm updating that now to, to put all of the lounges that uh, The Arrival, you can find The Arrival mm -hmm. in as well. Uh, we're expanding and definitely uh, building, building out and, and getting into more, more lounges. Biggest thing with me is that I love... I love this type of interaction when I'm going to lounges and being able to build a relationship with that lounge and and sort of I, I, I pour into them, they pour into me and we can mutually make things happen. So it's not always about being in every lounge. It's about being in the right lounge True. and making that uh, that relationship build bigger than what it was. Well, listen, the uh, kind of the the quote or the mantra that I always try to live my life is, is if you want to be successful, you hang out with successful people. Definitely. I'm this much better now by spending a little time with you, Ken. Uh, man, so I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Man, Definitely. listen, congratulations. Keep it up. And thanks for hanging out with us. I appreciate you having me, man. I mean, what what more would I like to be doing and kicking back and enjoying a cigar and just having a little conversation? That's there always are good. worst ways. And uh, Woo Pig Suey. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Big things are happening with, with, with the hogs right now. Right? So. Yeah, uh, you know what? I, I love being back here, um, and definitely when things are going so great for the university, and uh, we, we definitely look forward to seeing some better things happening. I love it. It's Ken Hamlin, everybody. Thanks for hanging out.